welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be chit-chatting my way through um, The Good and the Beautiful's Language Arts Level 3 and 4. Um, this one should be, you know, quite simple as I pretty much expressed a lot of how I feel about the curriculum as a whole in the videos that have come before this one. Um, I think this one took me a little bit longer to get around to. I have feelings about talking about my boys in homeschool and how we approach it. But one of my biggest challenges in homeschool was trying to figure out how to uh, deal with teaching my boys together. And I'm going to try to get through this video without going too much into um, that aspect of it because that is just going to be a whole separate video on its own. Uh, my two boys are seven and nine and I school them together. We, if you've been following me any bit of time, then you know that we really focus on our strengths and let our strengths cover each other's weaknesses. And that is how I approach homeschool and more so with my boys. This is probably the biggest need that The Good and the Beautiful filled. It just made it easier for me to manage the individual needs of my kids. I have a seven-year-old and a nine-year-old who are both working on level three and a level four and we're getting ready to move into level four and level five. <laughs> I'll explain why. I, I will say this, I'm not a huge fan of labels and um, and that same sentiment applies to what I'm about to say, but um, my younger son, who is seven, um, <laughs> I guess will be considered gifted. And I don't like saying that because I am a believer that, I'm a very strong believer that all children are gifted. It just, you know, it's just a matter of figuring out where their gifting is. But um, my younger son would probably be considered gifted. Um, he has an exceptional brain with a tremendous <laughs> mental capacity. Is that the right way to say it? I don't know. He just needs a lot of challenging. That mental challenge, um, but in a seven-year-old way, if that makes any sense. Um, so using the good and the beautiful and being able to toggle between the levels has been like a tremendous help for me in learning how to be his teacher. Just figuring out our rhythm and you know finding a pace for us together and how my older son's strengths could lend themselves to my younger son's weaknesses and then vice versa. Um, that has been a major journey for me in homeschool and I feel so blessed to have the opportunity to spend the time to pay attention and listen for guidance in that area. Anyway, so finding uh, materials that were easy for me to adapt and to make changes when I needed to make changes to fit what they needed collectively was hard. And when I found The Good and the Beautiful, it gave me everything that I needed to be able to customize a, a plan or a course of study that would work for my boys together and play on their strengths. Yeah, <laughs> so that is why I love this language arts curriculum. I mean, that's why I love their curriculum in general. Now I'm just going to show you what's included in the language arts programs for level three and four and kind of a little bit of how we use it. Um, we use these very heavily on our iPads. We pretty much do about 90% of the curriculum inside of our iPads and that works out really well for us. It also makes it super easy for us to just, for me to grab the iPad and just begin to teach and for us to do things together. Um, we answer a lot of the questions together. Um, they quiz one another and just make it a lot uh, more interactive. And by it being so interactive with both of them, um, I don't know. <sighs> Uh, I knew I was going to stumble over this one quite a bit because I'm really trying not to go into the other part of the deal <laughs> as far as how 
we have learned to school the boys together. Um, so I'm trying to keep a lot of that out and keep focused on the curriculum. So that's why I'm stumbling and I'm sorry. It's kind of hard to put into words. Um, oftentimes I'll use the hashtag on uh, Instagram, homeschooling by heart. And I, I truly do believe in that. A lot of the things that we do in homeschool are just really hard to communicate to others. You know, a lot of it has to do with what you know about your child, the time you spend studying them, the things that you spend observing. Um, I take a lot of notes both mentally and on paper and in my computers and, and things like that to really study my children and the way that they learn and um, their strengths and their weaknesses. And I pray a lot about um, and, and ask for help on how to address their weaknesses and how to handle certain situations. So a lot of this is just kind of hard for me to communicate how we do things, but I'm really putting forth an effort um, because I wish someone would have rambled through, um, rambled through their process with me. I would have found that very helpful. So I'm hoping that these videos are actually helpful. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that they are helpful to someone out there. So we'll just start with the level three, okay? Level three comes with this language arts and literature course book. Same deal, it includes literature, grammar and usage, punctuation, art, geography, spelling, vocabulary, and writing. And just like I use the other bits of the curriculum, I pull a lot of these things apart um, because it just best fits how we do things and we unpack everything. And that's stuff that I've mentioned in the other reviews that I've done thus far. So it's no different here, we do a lot of the same things here. So you have the course book and the course companion. There are two readers, volume one and volume two that go along with the third level. These are the challenge words included inside of the level and that is what is inside of level three. So I'll just start with the easiest things first. Um, these readers are no different than the other ones that we have. We don't necessarily go along with the course book. Um, as far as their recommended times on when to read, um, we just read them. Um, when we have certain spaces in our day and I think of it, they read through them. If we're missing library books or if I just need them to get in some extra reading time, we, we just work our way through these two readers. They enjoy these. The course companion just includes an answer key, quick reference, spelling dictation, and poetry memorization. Inside there's a daily checklist. They suggest you start by reading the Good and the Beautiful Level 3 Reader for at least 20 minutes. And like I said, we don't always do that. Um, but they do read them whenever we fit it in and that works out well for us. The next thing they have on the list is practice spelling words for 5 to 10 minutes. We don't do it in this order, but we do definitely work on our spelling in our own way that works really well for us. The next one is practice the challenge word flashcards for five minutes. Again, we do this work, we just don't necessarily fit it in the way that they have it. The next one is complete 30 to 45 minutes in the course book. And because we unpack everything, it normally takes us longer than this, which is why we have language arts and math on a block. So we can spend hours working on what is inside of the course book for the day. It just kind of depends on where our creativity takes us and where the kids' questions take us. It just kind of depends. Then the last thing they have on the checklist is to work on poetry memorization one to two times a week. And we do that, but we don't necessarily always use the poems that are inside of the course book. But I think it's really nice that they have this. Um, one of the biggest questions that I get is how do I start? And I love that about this curriculum. It makes it really easy for you to just kind of adapt the checklist that they already include for you, for you to start you know, getting into a rhythm right away. Um, we use it the way that fits us best, but in the beginning it's always really hard because you just don't know where to start. You have so many ideas and so many different options and the fact that they have this just kind of laid out for you is a very nice start. So I would suggest you start um, by following their instructions and then just tweaking it and making adjustments as you see what fits into your homeschool day. 
Next, they have a Mac key of continents, a Mac key for Europe, for North America. Then here are all of your instructions for spelling word practice. Everything is here for you to read through and feel things out. And next they have all of the charts. I love the structure. I don't know if I can say that enough. The majority of the words here, um, my kids had already mastered when we started. But what's nice is that it gives me just a simple layout to be able to follow and just add new words to. So I had no problem just kind of drawing it up and adding words to it and then we use these to review. They have active spelling practice ideas which is amazing. I love that they give you different ideas um, of things to try with your kids because every child is different and what works for some children is not going to work for another child and so I really love that they do that. Um, they have the spelling rules that are listed here which are really really nice to have because I'm y'all okay I don't know how you guys did spelling but I just spelled I don't remember any of the rules do you guys is that bad <laughs> I am a very good speller and I hardly knew any of these rules okay um, what I will say though is that it's nice to have it listed but I'm not as strict on the kids knowing the rule in and out um, I want them to have more of a feel for the rule rather than being able to actually repeat the rule itself. Uh, when I first started the curriculum, it was harder for me because um, we were trying to memorize the rules and I just felt like they were very in their head about spelling when I approached it that way. And I, it's probably me. It's probably because I had a challenge with it as well. Um, but a lot of homeschool is about the teacher-child relationship anyway. So if I have challenges teaching certain things, then a lot of times, you know, they're going to have a hard time grasping what you're trying to teach them in that way when you don't get it. You know, and that's why I'm so big on being passionate about the way you're teaching um, and the things that you're learning together. Because if you're not excited about it, it's going to be so much harder to teach. So I just suggest you eliminate those things that are really hard for you and to try for things that are easier for you to teach. Does that make sense? <laughs> and then the things that are harder for me to teach, I get help, okay? I find a family member, a friend, I don't know, some type of resource, I pray, okay? <laughs> and ask the Lord to send me some type of resource or enlighten me somehow to help me in that area. But like I said, it was nice to have the spelling rules listed because I totally was like, I did not even know that was the rule. <laughs> I just knew how to spell the words. <laughs> so obviously I didn't win a spelling bee, but that's okay. Next is the poetry memorization. Same deal as the other ones that I've gone through already and the poems that are included here. And now I'm just gonna kind of flip through and tell you a little bit about We Love and how we use it. I'm gonna try to do it quickly because like I said, I've already pretty much talked a lot about um, why I love the way they structure their curriculum. There is a level three at a glance and this just covers everything that is included or touched upon inside of this particular level. Grammar, usage, punctuation, alphabetical order, capitalization rules, days of the week. The next part is the table of contents. So if we're having a conversation and they start talking about specific words that happen to be adverbs, and then we get into that conversation, I want to be able to jump to a curriculum that allows me to go straight to that lesson. If we are only on lesson number five, I don't want to have to wait all the way until lesson 22 to dive into adverbs. I want to be able to go straight to it. So I found it really easy for me to be able to do that. And it happens very, very often in our little homeschool. Lesson one is comma in a series. Uh, lesson two is silent e-jobs. Lesson three is spelling rule number one. They have this section um, about this course and they will lay out any of your frequently asked questions, which is nice. And I've talked about a lot of that in other videos so far. 
Um, they will lay out whatever items that you need, what is included, any commonly asked questions, how to get started. Um, they will lay out information about the level three readers and how to teach each day. So all of this information is there. They say that the total daily time is 60 to 90 minutes. And like I've mentioned earlier, um, it normally takes us longer. It just kind of depends on the day. So a general lesson is the same basic format. They will have any notes above, any section to read to your child, any activities for you to do. And I love how they have check boxes on the side so as you work your way through the lesson, you can just check those things off. My kids do these inside of their iPads. A lot of different ways that we mark up our iPad pages that just really make filling out a worksheet a bit more fun. So we really enjoy doing our work on our iPad. Um, I am still getting around to doing that tutorial type of video with the kids um, for you to see how they use their iPads. There is a bit of a learning curve just because um, it just takes some practice. It's new and different, I guess, would be the best, best way I would describe it. So, um, it just takes some practice getting used to the different tools and changing between the tools and things like that but more than likely it's more us having to get through that in our mind than the kids because they are pretty much well versed in all things electronics and iPads and things so they would have a much easier time just kind of getting through all the tools and learning how to quickly switch and how to erase and things like that how to cut and paste we do all of that on our ipad then of course they have bits of beautiful artwork i can't say enough how much i love the way they give instructions inside of the curriculum i like that they use um different colors of ink in this case it is green i don't i don't know i know that seems simple really simple of me but it is really helpful because when we open up curriculum like I've said before there is just a lot of words sometimes so just the basic layout and how things are structured make it really easy to determine which things are for the child to read which things are for you the parent to read it's just a really well organized curriculum which is really helpful when you're trying to work your way through it. They have these little sections called the Writer's Workshop, which are really nice. I really love how simple their activities are throughout their lessons. They are consistent so that the child can get used to them um, and learning how to complete them with ease, but they are different. Um, again, read to the child and then there's a note and, there, and the ink is in different colors. That is really, really helpful when you're trying to work your way through a lot of different resources to prepare for the next day or the next week. So that's really, really helpful in planning for me. So they have the syllables that are broken down, the same thing that they have been used to before. We have a ball just kind of highlighting those and going through those on our iPad. Um, throughout the course book you will see poetry included and I normally just pull this out and create our own little separate section of poetry that we do whenever we have free time so we're not necessarily doing poetry consistently their lessons include dictation um, I love a lot of these worksheets they're just really nice and simple and because we do them on our iPads we can just erase the page and do them again it's great Another thing that I normally pull out of this course book is the editing sections. Um, we were doing them as they were laid out and I just found that it was harder for them to grasp the concept separating them. So I did the same thing that I do with a lot of the other things inside of the course book which are really helpful for us. Um, just like I pull the geography out and just like I pull the poetry out, I also pull out the edit the stories a lot of the times. I just group them all together and then upload them onto our iPad and when it is time for us to work on editing, normally on our writing days, which is Monday, then we will work on these sections. They are really easy to complete on the iPad. There's just a bit of a learning curve. Um, and again, this just has to do with how comfortable your children are with their devices. You know, <laughs> other than that, there is absolutely nothing wrong with doing them in the course book, of, 
of course, but I'm trying to speak on the different ways that we use the curriculum. So that's why I'm mentioning um, doing it through our iPads. The artwork inside of the Good and the Beautiful's curriculum is so gorgeous <laughs> and so key. Um, and like I've said before, I just kind of wish there was more of it a lot of times, but I like how they make it important, which is really nice. Um, I've mentioned this over and over again about the good and the beautiful and the way they lay out their curriculum But the way that they structure their activities and their worksheets are just really nice and simple I have seen too many times where you look inside of workbooks or other curriculum where it's just hard to figure out what they want you to do um, And the kids will often look at me and say what do they want me to do? You know and that is never good that really messes up your whole entire learning flow when you have to try to figure out What this workbook writer is trying to ask you to do so um, I like that all of their instructions are really clear beautifully laid out and that is really Helpful. I mean, I don't know if I can say it enough. It is really helpful, at least for this mom who is very visual, and my kids are all very visual. The parts of speech hunt, they just want you to write the correct part of speech above every word of each sentence below. I've been able to find different ways to adapt every bit of their curriculum when I'm teaching all three levels with my children. And I find that so valuable but for instance this is part of level three but what I'll do with my kids is if they're all near me we'll do this together and I'll just give each of them one part of speech so instead of one child having to identify each one we do it together as a family and I will assign an adverb to my oldest or an adjective to my youngest son or um, an article to my little girl and I found that that's really easy and they have a lot of fun um, looking for their part of speech and then by us doing it together the boys really encourage her when she gets them right and then she encourages them when they get them right it's just really nice to do them together as a family and we're all learning those things and spending more time together so I like doing that and then also sometimes they they still do them separately um, diagramming sentences is another one that I generally pull out and use during our writing time instead of during our basic language arts time and like I said just separating my days and my schedule by subjects really helps me and that's why I pull a lot of those things out and group them by subject because it helps me to stay on top of um, practicing those things every day but concentrating my efforts in that certain area yeah you just have to do what works for you and what works best for your family so this really works well for us so we just pull out the diagramming sentences love these so much I struggled with them when I tried to do them the way they were laid out in the course book um, but when I pulled them together and just included them in our writing time it made all of the difference it's nice also because they have an answer key which makes it really easy for my boys to work together one will do one one will check one then of course there are the geography sections which we pull out and just make our own there is another activity that is just a lot of fun it's not worked out here because we do it in our iPad but I'll just read it to you. So this is on UI lesson number 35. When you read all the words on the clouds in 45 seconds or less, you may draw raindrops and lightning bolts in the blank area under the clouds. That is so much fun. <laughs> this type of thing is so much fun. And oftentimes if we want to pull the activities off of the page, like I said, we will do them in our iPads or we might um, copy these words in the clouds on our sliding glass window in our schoolroom or on our mirror in our living room we just kind of like use those little things to just have more fun with them okay and now this is nice for lesson 37 they had a reading challenge which was a biography so we're gonna read to the child a biography is a true story about a real person you get to read a biography about a great man and woman in history we learn a lot from biographies about people places and time periods in history biographies can also inspire us to want to be better people 
have the child read any biography below and fill out the chart by writing the title of the book and coloring in the picture. Move on to the next lessons while the child is reading the book. The following books are Jenny Phillips' top picks for biographies for level three children, but any biographies you approve of count for this challenge. Advanced readers can read the books on their own. Slow readers may need you to read every other page or paragraph. Don't you just love that? I mean, she does that all throughout the curriculum. She just gives different suggestions on how you would approach um, different situations in your homeschool. I mean, she's very understanding of the fact that sometimes they're further and sometimes they need more time to work on things. So just offering up different suggestions is really, really helpful and just kind of gets your wheels turning as to what you would do to customize the learning experience for your individual child. I mean, you could do the same structure, but with all of your kids that you're homeschooling, at least that's how I normally do things. So we find something that fits for each of them and then we do these things together. So oftentimes I just pull this stuff out and make a little mental note that this would be super easy for us to do together instead of separating it. There's another reading challenge on historical fiction. You read to your parent or teacher, again, now the child is reading to you, um, about what historical fiction is. I mean, there's just so many ways that you can adjust it and make it fit um, exactly what you're looking for because no curriculum is going to fit exactly what you're looking for. So it's really about you finding those things or curriculum being very easy for you to adjust and make it your own. So this is why I like it. This is. This is absolutely why I like it so much. Another thing I like to do and why I like to skip around a bit as their teacher is that it gives me a preview on different challenges and things that I can throw into the mix to kind of introduce them to um, information that they are going to get into later on. So if you go towards the end of the book, you can tell that the vocabulary gets a bit more complex, which is amazing. And um, I'll go and make no uh, specific vocabulary so that I can start introducing it earlier on, just kind of throwing things out there, um, using words and sentences so that when we come across them, everything is not just totally new information. So in lesson 128 on targeted reading, The Secret Scroll, in this story, I will practice challenging multi-syllable words that I have practiced with my flashcards. I, I also want to mention this. Throughout the curriculum, a lot of the things that they have to read really help them take ownership over the things that they are learning and they explain things to them. Um, they define words um, for them and that's really nice. I mean, there are other curriculums that do this same thing, but I just like the pace and the gentle approach that they have um, when they're trying to teach certain concepts and values. So um, in this lesson, words like commence, um, circumvent, eloquence, excessive, extravagance, audacious, civility. I'll go through and I'll take a look at those things really quickly and start introducing those words in my sentences um, with them so that when we get around to this they're already familiar with these words if they weren't already. Lesson 130 I'll quickly skim through. Shrewd, adamantly, um, evade, expended, content, vast, plight, utterly. They're just words you don't you don't use on a daily basis and so just having that quick review for me just kind of reminds me, hey, throw this in there every now and then. See if they can pick up on what the word means before we actually get around to defining it. So I like that as well. Definitely stumbling through this one, but I'm trying, okay? I think that curriculum review videos are kind of hard for me because I feel like I'm repeating myself over and over again, which I am. And now the challenge words. There's a whole section on how to approach the challenge words. Um, I believe you just use the Ziploc bags, the ones that they master you put in a different section. We just work our way through them. I like to include the ones that they master because, I don't know, they that sense of mastery just kind of really makes it easy on them so that they're not constantly going over difficult words with no sense of like accomplishment. If everything is hard, then they start to get a bit frustrated. So I typically just include them all and I'll have them um, go through them with one another and they make a game out of it however they would like. 
that is how we do this. We just make sure we go over them once a week. So now for my boys, we used a level three as our base and then level four as our stretch material. So I have level four. There is a part one and a part two. And that's mainly because this curriculum is heavy on the reading. And then you also have the creative companion. It includes writing, art, and geography. And you use this with the level four course readers. And then the last part is the geography and grammar cards. Now, I've already shown you these inside of my how we do geography with the good and the beautiful. If you have these already with one of the levels, then you get to choose an option that does not include the cards, um, but you still use these same cards, which I think is so nice. It's really nice that you're able to use different parts of the curriculum. Then as you grow, you don't have to keep repurchasing things that you don't need. You get what you need. As far as the Creative Companion is concerned, I'm not really going to talk about this one too much here. I'm going to do this one separately separately in my very last video, um, which is just going to be a very quick overview of the Creative Companion and the Nature Notebook and how we're using the two of those in our homeschool. So I'm not really going to touch on the Creative Companion here. I will just try and backlink to that video so that if you want to see what is inside of the Creative Companion, you can see that there. Now, how we use the level four. Um, like I said, I need the stretch material. I need to be able to use the content from this level and adapt it in a level three type of way. And so I work my way through it and use what we can and move past what we cannot or what is not super beneficial for us right now. And then we are nice and familiar with it. So when we start this year, we'll be starting with the language arts level four and then using the level five as our stretch material. So that is how we are doing things. Um, when you get into this level, kind of like the preview from the end of the last level, you can tell that there's going to be a lot more reading for the child, which is good. So here there is no table of contents, which is not super fun for me because of the way that I like to use things, but I totally understand it because it's meant for the child to just kind of work their way through the curriculum a lot on their own. So um, I just had to do a little bit more searching to figure out how I was going to use things and how I was going to adapt things, and, and I did that, and it was not that difficult to do. They made it so easy in the other levels that I guess I could do a little work here. So in the beginning, there is a daily checklist. You complete the following items each a day. So there's practicing grammar cards or geography cards for five to seven minutes. We do that, not necessarily every day. Um, the next one is complete one lesson in your course book. Depending on how we unpack the lesson determines how long it takes us to get through the lesson or how many we complete in the day. Um, complete one lesson in your creative notebook. We do our creative notebook separately, which is no big deal. And then lastly, it's read books from the Good and the Beautiful book list. We don't do that at all. There's quite a bit of reading in here that is part of their stretch material. So right now we don't need to do that. In the beginning of the course, just like everything else they do, they'll tell you all about the course, the things that you need, any additional items, any additional books. Here it says you need a set of chalk pastels, a kneaded eraser, art tape, workable spray fixative, um, watercolor or pastel paper, a blank notebook with line paper, everything that they have listed here I already have. Um, they even cover the things that the parent or teacher should do following each day. Um, I love this so much. Listen to the child read the challenging words and text at the beginning of most lessons and help sound out words the child cannot read. Rather than telling the word, help the child sound out the word. Check the child's work using the answer key. So really, this gives you so much instruction on how to kind of work your way through the course together. And then you can make an adjustment um, if you need to. It even tells you that children can become overwhelmed with large writing projects. This course breaks writing into small assignments, making writing more achievable and enjoyable. So I pace myself with the writing assignments in here, like I said, because this is a bit above what my children 
where my children need to be anyway. So I'm really just pulling out what I want to here because I know that we're going to rework it um, the next year. They have spelling, daily spelling drills are included in every lesson and help the child practice the following 80 targeted words rule breakers and commonly misspelled words. The length of daily work and the length of the course. Um, it's a total of 85 minutes. Um, six minutes with the geography or grammar cards. 64 minutes with the course book and the creative companion. And 15 minutes of personal reading. So that's how they break it down and you can adjust it based on what fits best for your family. And we do that. There's a reference section that will list the editing symbols and the editing explanations. I mean, really they cover it all for you to be able to just kind of get a grasp on how things are laid out in the curriculum and how you would like to approach things. They go through sentence diagramming and the steps here. These are not things that I'm having my child go through because it is their stretch material. I'm looking at this stuff myself to get a better grasp on how I'm going to help them um, understand the concepts and kind of like ease them into doing these things next year. On the next page there are terms to know, an adjective, an adverb, articles, coordinating conjunctions. So then in lesson one it will tell you how the course works. Practicing grammar, the geography cards, basically the things we've already listed. It'll have the reference section, um, notes on editing, the answer key. It will tell you what the child or the parent is supposed to be doing. What I basically did inside of this level is pull out all of the stuff that I really like and we just work our way through it. Um, they just have really cool little um, activities that the kids can do to help them kind of interact with the information a bit more, like these spelling ribbons. To create a spelling ribbon, you write the words in a continuous line, creating a pattern. Use each word three to four times. I really like how they do stuff like that. <laughs> this reading assessment, super simple. Um, you're just going to write down the time and number of incorrect words, and they're going to read through these challenging sentences. And we do that now because I feel like it's nice stretch material for them. The only challenge that I kind of have, and this is not even a fair critique because it's not meant in this way, because I'm using it in this way, I'll just kind of share. Um, but because a lot of this information I'm using for my six, seven year old, he was still six, seven, so he writes bigger. Um, and a lot of the spacing is geared towards older children. Um, so that's kind of a challenge that was really easy for us to address though. Um, I just basically copied this information onto a whiteboard or onto our whiteboard on our iPad and that's how we solved that issue. But they'll have daily spelling drills. You look at it, you say it, you cover it, you write it, you check it. Complete twice for each word, measure and neighbor. Then you write the following spelling words in alphabetical order, neighbor, measure, continue, influence. So it's basically a lot of the things that they are doing in the younger levels, but with more challenging words and information, which is perfect for stretch material. Write the syllables for each spelling word in the boxes. And then they have a crossword puzzle down here. So really they're just taking up the information, breaking it up and making like little simple activities for the kids to be able to complete. Then you move into the reading. <laughs> like I said, in this level, there's a lot more reading going on um, that is somewhat challenging for my younger son. He is, um, he, he reads exceptionally well. Um, but he is still seven. So he's still seven, so um, he'll get tired of reading so much. So I just kind of gauge and feel him out in this area. And a lot of this I just read to them and that's really helpful so we can work our way through the lessons without them having to read so much because it can be a lot to read between what we're reading on our own plus what we read while we're working through other subjects and subject matter plus this on top of that it just I just 
you know, I just gauge the day and get a feel for how we're going to approach things. If they're going to read, if I'm going to read. I think that's all I'm really going to get into. The grammar cards, we do them together. What is a compound sentence? A compound sentence is a sentence with two or more independent clauses. We just kind of use them creatively, whatever fits in very simply. We don't do too much in this area and we'll just wait to kind of follow a little bit more of the rules when we start to use it as our base curriculum. I'm really hoping that I um, do a lot more of showing you what we do rather than telling you what we do um, because a lot of times I can go over the things that we are doing and I can say them out loud but what matters is what we are actually doing and what what they what is actually working for them and I find that I learned so much from watching other people just simply teach you know or talk to their children or you know be with their children um and those things are really beneficial to me and that is what i kind of want to put out there so i love getting the clips of them actually doing their schoolwork and we have a lot of fun with it um i use my little clapper see <laughs> yeah so we use our little clapper um i just try to find ways to incorporate things that i love um with teaching them and uncovering things that they love and that's really a lot of fun for me. So I'll use my little clapper and my cameras and stuff and, and I'll have them reenact certain things or um, complete a different part of the worksheet again. And they get really into it. Um, and they like to see me having fun with it. And then at the same time, I get to get clips of them um, doing their thing, learning, and to share with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, I put a lot of time and effort and work into what I share. I love that I found the good and the beautiful. Um, I was doing fine without using any prepared curriculum. Um, we've learned a lot about one another um, and how we learn together as a family from those years that I did not use curriculum. Um, but then I got to a certain stage where I had enough confidence in what I knew about us um, learning together as a family. And I actually was able to identify what I was looking for. And I found that the good and beautiful fit what I was looking for. Um, and it was easy for me to figure that out because I knew what I was looking for. <laughs> I hope you guys like this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know. Leave them in the description box below. Make sure you're subscribed if you wanna see more from us. And give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you didn't, just don't thumbs up. You know, you don't have to hit the thumbs down. <laughs> I'll never understand the thumbs down. I will never understand it. Just don't watch, people. Just don't watch. But anyway, um, I am loving this curriculum. You guys already know that. And hopefully I have shared more of how we use it and how we make it fit. Because curriculum can be so much fun. The different resources that you get, the different books you get, and all that other stuff. But when it comes down to it, what are you actually using? How are you fitting it in the days? And that is what really matters. And that's what I'm really trying to focus on as each year goes by. Am I serving my children with what I'm doing as their teacher rather than collecting a lot of resources um, that I'm not really even diving into? So yeah, I'm unpacking life over here. <laughs> okay.